All right, welcome back to Live Wire. This is Ray, and with me is what's up, it's Peter. Your man, what's up? Back from his long little vacay. How you doing, man? How you been? Fucking sweating like a pig, man. It's been hot out. This Cali weather is just crazy. It's fucking humid as fuck in this apartment. <laughs> <laughs> fucking killing me, man. Okay, I got a shower. Put the AC twice. on, man. I should get the AC over here. I'm gonna like be fined by this drought situation, cause man, like this fucking. We finally getting rain now, so. That's true. True. But it's still hot. Fucking. It's hot. like Florida weather, but we're in California. Like, if we want to live in Florida, we live in Florida. But we live in Cali. What's going on? That's true. That's <laughs> true. But yeah, it almost felt like a little winter break after uh, straight after the summer's over. Straight out of Compton was over. Mm-hmm. Um, not much to not much to check out. Yeah. I, I literally did not see any movie at the movie theater since Straight Outta Compton. Straight. I mean, I saw No Escape. But I know. <laughs> like I heard the review. But you know, like the lineup. Even like for like last week, the lineup was so bad that I was just like, I can't, I can't. It was like the best thing there was to offer was the the transporter. You skipped that? I had to, man. <laughs> I'm not about to. <laughs> if I it just, ain't with Jason Statham, is you ain't rocking with it or what? You know, I was a fan of the first one. I was, a, I'm a Jason you know what? Statham fan. I, I think I liked the first one too, but the second and third one were pretty ridiculous. Yeah, well, you know, Jason Statham kind of saved it for me. Mm-hmm. His, his charisma and whatnot. Yeah. I don't know about this one. I heard it's about pimps and hoes. Who's the main guy? His name is Ed Screen. Ed it's... Screen. He comes from, <laughs> he comes from a uh, Game of Thrones, but okay. like he got, he he plays like one character. And then, you ever seen The Age of Adeline or Adeline or whatever? Uh, no, this is one with Blake Lively, right? So, yeah. I haven't seen so, it. like, the guy that she falls in love with there replaces him. So, like... Hmm. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, and this guy, I don't know. I don't know how it flopped, you know, but then again, not a lot of interesting movies to go see mm-hmm. and shit. But, you know, we're doing the best we can. Well, we had two movies this past weekend. Um, oh, yeah. And I was going to see one, but I ended up seeing seeing the other so that's what happened so that's what happened that's what happened (laughs) to be honest uh we went we we bought tickets for the the perfect guy in the morning but something came up we went back in the afternoon and we were trying to catch the two o'clock but with the baby and all and you know leaving the baby with her mom did they hook Uh, you up with the free tickets yeah you know the crazy thing is that this guy was like oh they're gonna charge you because you bought your tickets in the morning they're gonna charge you a surcharge for the afternoon showing Mm. so he took like these like amc tickets that he got from a booklet and he scanned it so we wouldn't have to pay that surcharge no no so we got tickets so we couldn't make the two o'clock perfect guys so we saw the 230 uh showing of the visit the visit night Shyamalan's latest M. Night Shyamalan is back my goodness he needed he, he needed a hit he needed something he to needed like <laughs> you know what like i feel like M. Night Shyamalan's career is kind of like california with the drought you know like it's just like it's been dried up i feel like <laughs> man like are we ever gonna see you know some like some precipitation from this career you know, you know i was thinking about this it's almost 20 years since the sixth sense it's been Damn. almost fucking 20 which or- is which was pretty remarkable and ahead of its time i i believe when it first came out that film. yeah yeah so. it was it's an amazing movie. it still it still holds like up a, extremely it was like well. a game changer like to really like it caps it like capsulates uh, a moment in time for movies like that it came out like 99 yeah. you know almost like so this like to the like the millennium to the 2000s like this was the one of the movies you know that we were, we were going to bring into the 2000s and people so, still talk about the still twist be, yeah like still talk about the twist people still get their mind blown about the twist right you know? New generation of people that never seen the movie catch it, they get blown away mm-hmm. again and again. You see, that's when you know this movie's got like a lifeline. Mm-hmm. You know, it's gonna be around for. It's his classic. It's his masterpiece. Yeah. Then you know came the second one, and mm-hmm. the second one was Unbreakable. Did you like Unbreakable? Unbreakable was cool. You know, I remember seeing in theaters, and I just remember something you know about like uh, Bruce Willis like surviving some catastrophe, and then like. Samuel Jackson's like fragile, Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass. I thought it was like a almost like a superhero movie, but oh, without that, the capes. That's what it was. That was like it was his his take on superhero mythology. Okay. And I don't really remember much because I what I remember the most is yeah the accident. I remember it being extremely slow. 
slow as a fucking snail. Mm-hmm. And then the action scene in the end, and then like, and the big twist. Because mm-hmm. Shyamalan always has to have a twist. Yeah, you know, he started off with the sixth sense of having that big reveal at the end. And so almost was like, well, now I got to do this for a every big, movie. Every fucking after. movie. <laughs> and then, uh, well, that one did all right. It got pretty, pretty decent I remember reviews. being pretty, pretty good. Like, I remember being decent. Yeah, it was good. It's, it was good. Um, then came Science. And, and I think Science was better. I think okay. Science was stronger. I think, okay. I think for all its flaws, and like the third act is the biggest flaw in the film. But for all its flaws, like, I think it's a... Great movie, mm-hmm. Mel Gibson and White. Like the whole cast, the whole family, mm-hmm. you know, except for Shyamalan himself. Who played, uh, he played, no, he didn't play a doctor in this he one. He played, played the uh, asshole that killed Mel Gibson's oh, wife. Oh, that's right, that's right. He played a doctor <laughs> in The Sixth Sense. That's right. Yeah, he played a doctor in The Sixth Sense. Uh, he probably played another doctor in fucking Unbreakable. Something like that. Like he became, he thought he was like this, this millennium's. You know Alfred Hitchcock, and oh, he was yeah. like, "I gotta run with it. I gotta make a surprise tw- twist, and then I also have to show my face." But I remember him having like like a bigger role in Science. Science, yeah, he had uh, like one big scene. He had one big scene where mm-hmm. he tries to confess Mel Gibson about his feelings and mm-hmm. and whatnot. And Mel Gibson was just like, "Yo, you lucky you ain't a Jew. You <laughs> lucky you ain't Jewish." <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> Unleash the wrath. I know. Shit. Uh, <laughs> gonna get he gonna get Joaquin Phoenix to swing away at his yeah. ass. Yeah, but I remember Signs being like his last great film. It was his, it was a great film and it was his biggest success. You know, next to Sixth Sense. Mm-hmm. Um, then came. Then what happened? Then came the downward spiral. <laughs> then came. The, I feel like we're just like telling people like about this man's filmography and just I really think, going I think like it's where necessary. things went wrong. I think it's necessary. I okay. think people need to know about this motherfucker. Like, so I, then what came after science? Came came the village, mm. which was the most boring, stupid. I mean, uh, lazy. I understand he was trying to do something like the Twilight Zone type. You know, mm-hmm. about a 19th century village that's or a community that's not allowed to go into this certain village because there are monsters there that will mm-hmm. eat you. And Joaquin Phoenix and Bryce Dallas Howard are investigating what's going on. And like, I remember the acting being, you know, decent. Like, actually, you yeah, know, well, like, what's, I mean, sure, you got Joaquin Phoenix. Mm-hmm. You know, you got. <laughs> You got William Hurt, but you got Adrian Brody playing retarded. Like, okay. He, and he went full retard. <laughs> he, he went full retard. You know, like, I remember, I, you know, I try to block this movie out of my mind, but I remember him, like, sitting in a corner going, nyah, nyah. Mm-hmm. like, I'm all, whoa. Dude, he was reaching. Yeah. He was like, I don't know what he was doing, but <laughs> he was, he's like, he saw Rain Man. He's like, they could do it. They could, could, make bet, it, it could get an Academy Award nomination. I something. bet if the Oscar committee that gave him the pianist Oscar... Mm-hmm. Like saw that movie, they would have been like they would have pulled the Norbit on like Eddie Murphy. Like, oh no, we forgot. <laughs> give it, give it back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's. Ew. Right. So yeah, and of course that movie had a twist that was just that was. I think a lot of people were a little bit wowed, but it was didn't have the same impact because the movie it was. It didn't just, have the same effect. I remember being kind of cheaped out by it. Yeah. Like I remember, you, you remember being cheaped out. I remember cheaped out, but I remember. Literally, like, my entire family, my cousins, you know, I think my grandma came, like, from my mom's side, and we, like, took up, like, a whole row, and, you know, at the Regal up in the hill. I remember this distinctly because I remember, like, bigging this movie up and, like, like let's go to the movies. Let's all get scared because the trailer was... The trailer was something that the movie wasn't, and it, right. it was conveying a movie that was scary. I mean, it was kind of like you're in the woods, and these are, you know, like, old times, you know, like, just something that you can... You know, just like creepy, you sink your teeth in, and it right, wasn't—it right, right. wasn't that at all. Like it was just totally like really disappointing. And I remember coming out of the theater just like so, like man, like you know, at least he's gonna make a better movie next time. And I th- and I think a big problem with like starting from here, but like that it kind of s- was noticeable in all his movies is like he started taking himself a little ex- a little too seriously. The mm. more each movie came on with like it started with, you know, Unbreakable with the like really serious looking mythology of superheroes and you mm-hmm. go, "Okay, I can I can dig it." Yeah. Then then like he started getting 
longer roles in his films. Like in mm-hmm. Science, he had his a whole scene, and you mm-hmm. go, okay. And but it's it's almost like he took himself so seriously. Like he actually believed to himself that like my God, everything I shit out is fucking magic. I should just like lick my own asshole because it tastes so good. <laughs> like, I think he thought he was he became a genre or something. Right, like, and he was just like, like I can the do next no M Night Shyamalan movie. You know, yeah, like, I and remember people that. would go and run the, to the yeah. theaters and go see it. Like, you know. Are you gonna see the new Shyamalan? Like, yeah, yeah, M. Night yeah. Shyamalan, yeah. the village, and Kinda then like this mysterious aura about him that like I thought he really lost it after Signs. And then uh, yeah, because after that that brand. It became a brand, but not the brand he wanted. It became kind so, of stupid, silly, funny horror films. Yeah. So, so the village, it didn't. It it was successful. The critics weren't that great. Um, do you remember what was the the one after that? Uh, was that the lady in, in the water? Yes. You know, I was gonna skip over that. One. Lady in the water. I just remember like being like really drawn out overblown and kind of just kind of cheesy like i was you know there's I characters was, in there that was like wow did he really write this you know? i was so excited for that movie because from what the trailers t- made me feel paul giamatti is the hero mm-hmm. i was like oh my goodness finally paul giamatti gets front and center i mean i understand he's not the typical he's the leading man leading man right, like, right, right. Uh, in no sense of the word, like not the ladies man. are not gonna go screaming to the theater to go see him. They do not want him to take his shirt. <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't want the Matthew and they. No. Can you imagine like him in fool's gold, no. somebody running around without a shirt, like looking for treasure? No, I can't see that. I don't want to see that. <laughs> That'd but be yeah. fun. I- Oh, I go see Giamatti to see like some really great performance. Right, and you, and I thought it was a really smart move to put Giamatti in in the lead. But then you know this movie was kind of like his take on a fairy tale. Mm-hmm. And of course, and you know how I was talking about the pretentiousness in this movie and in his work, and more and more, he wrote himself a character. That, See, I don't. To be honest, I don't even remember. So yeah, let me listen. Well, let up. me let me tell. You. Let he me listen. Wrote, up. He re- he wrote himself a character, a part that he will play, that he becomes a writer that will be the best writer in the world that would save the world. Hmm. That's that's and he played that part. Wow. Then he, you know, like the pretentiousness is at an all time high. And then he also hired Freddy Rodriguez to be like the guy that. Yes, with the, with the I strongest. remember. Like, but the, one side was like limp dick, and yeah. then the one side was like swole. So you know which one he masturbated with, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just remember Freddy Rodriguez's character, and I just remember like being like blown away, and not in a good way, because I was like, "Wow, this is really cartoony." Yeah, like, and I, I think, couldn't take it seriously when I saw it in, in you know, in and, theaters. And I think he had a real hard on for Bryce Dallas Howard because she think. also co-starred. In like, yeah, so she was in the village, and I mean, Lady I guess in the Water. Had, so was she like a mermaid? Cause to be honest, I yeah, really don't remember something like it. that. And then like there was a monster that was a mermaid killer, but then she like she becomes a fairy and flies away or something like something. that. Or, I just remember I, the. Cool was, apartment complex and just quirky next door neighbors or something. I remember, like that. I remember, like my my dad would like recommend me this movie, and I was just like, "How can you recommend me this shit?" It's like, because it is the funniest shit I've seen in years. So he man. took it as a comedy. Though. Oh, he took it as the biggest comedy. He mm. thought he thought this shit was like a Three Stooges sketch. Mm. Yeah, so that's when things started getting real grim with him, and then the happening came. Now the happening, you remember the happening. The happening, I remember Wahlberg. like kind of, kind of getting excited because the last two films were pretty shitty, and then this one was like, M Night Shyamalan's first rated R yes. film. Yes, I- <laughs> yes, yes. The, the advertisement was crazy. Rated R. Rated R. I was just like, what? Oh, rated man, R. We could get some gritty, some like some graphic, some bloody amputations, oh maybe some sex in it. I don't know. It was at a time when like everything was rated R. Like it was really like Saw was hot. The hostile movies were hot. So like it's almost like he needed to compete. He needed. Well, what am I gonna do? I need to compete with this. Let me just make myself an R-rated movie, mm-hmm. but there's nothing to go R about. I mean, to really, to be honest, to be real with you, I remember we like leaving the theater. I was like, wow, that really could have been PG-13 because there was like even off-camera violence, and I was like, wow, yeah, really? like was, was the R rating a part of the like there promo? Are, there or are what? PG-13 movies that are more violent than The Happening, my my opinion. 
Um, and and they it, remind the audience like what the happening was about. It was like some like like yeah, it's like planet Earth was being abused. The right. human race was abusing and raping the planet. Right. So the plants got angry. It's like an airborne disease gone crazy. Yeah. And this and it the came plants, from trees came from and trees plants. And the plants fight back. This oh, is like the, the most I'm epic I'm scared world. of nature. <laughs> and oh, like, shit. And trees, <laughs> and trees start poisoning us and making us kill ourselves and throw our head in front of a lawnmower just run into a lion and I don't understand how these like the pollen in the plants would make us like so, run to a lion or right. you know like I would understand that it would poison us and kill us mm-hmm. but like to like hey look a lion let me go I don't know if there. he was trying to be like socially aware climate control and making it into a like a scary yeah, film around that time there was also that like was the whole the... scare about an inconvenient truth right right yeah so, so. there's that um so but it, it did was... not work. And we got a weak Mark Wal the weakest Mark Wahlberg <laughs> that I will never want to see again. I just I don't even want to recount what happens in that movie. I mean, there were so many things wrong with Mark Wahlberg playing that part. Like a lot of people got mad because he played like a math teacher. Was it a math? It was like a math or science teacher. A science teacher, that's right. Because the the math teacher was what are the, uh, oh, John Leguizamo, right? John, John <laughs> Your favorite. John Leguizamo. Yeah. I, I always tell people, like, man, sometimes I got to get John Leguizamo, like, I got to get the movie One Less Star because John Leguizamo is in it. Mm. But then, like, but I don't know. He's been he's been growing on me. Like, he's, you know. I and, I, actually, and to my my memory, I don't think Leguizamo was the, was the case. I don't think he, he was. He was the, not the prob- problem. Problem. To be honest with you, he was. He was the least of our worries. I actually thought that his character, uh, and he dies. So I mean, that probably and, would have and got he gained a, the star. Probably, so, yeah, yeah. I was so saying, he, he star, probably gained so. star from you. So that was the soul. That was the reason why the movie got one star. Oh, nice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, Mark Wahlberg played the science teacher, and he's starting to tell us about the bees, you know, mm-hmm. and and I remember Zoe Dish now had like, these like big. Oh, wide eyes and I'm just like she used her she eyes like, to full effect in this movie. really like she's yeah. like a gawker in this film like I don't know, <laughs> like literally <laughs> so so yeah it, I mean there were so many things wrong with this movie the most I remember the two things I remember is when everybody starts asking Mark Wahlberg for help and he's just like please let me think please yeah. let me think I yeah. don't know I just need a second to think but I go why is anybody even following this motherfucker's lead right. if he doesn't even know what to do right the other scene is when he begs his life to a plant. Mm-hmm. He's like, please, I don't want any trouble. He's just get, ridiculous. He was like, getting ready to get down on his knees and suck the pollen out of this plant. Right. Like, next thing you know, the, the plant was fake. It was plastic. It, it was just, I, oh, it was one of the worst scary movies I've After ever that seen. movie, I was just like, man, how the mighty have fallen. M. Night Shyamalan. Will you ever make a good movie again? You may again? think. You may think, but we're not done. Okay. Because we're then... We're going to wrap it up with next two films, right? What's going on? Uh, there's, there's two more, there's two right? Two more? Yeah. Yeah, then, then came The Last Airbender, which mm-hmm. was like the take on that Nickelodeon cartoon show. He got some flack for, for changing some, some races in the... The most I'll say about this movie, because I don't know about the show. I mean, a lot of people were offended. I mean, they called them the, the movie racist because of the casting. I don't know. I don't watch the show. I remember my little brother watched the show. So I was like, oh, let me take you to see this movie. I'll go all out for you, baby. I'll pay for you in 3D. You mm-hmm. know, because back in the... That was the beginning of 3D. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'll, I'll go all out for you. And he, like 10 minutes in, he was getting all mad and flustered. And I'm just like, boy, this is the kind, this is the bullshit you like, bro. This yeah. is the kind of... I'm not blaming Shyamalan for this. He's like, no, it's not It's not the show's fault. Yeah. It, it's his fault. Shyamalan. It's, it's his fault. Shyamalan fucked up Nickelodeon. Man, for good. Nickelodeon never called back. No. <laughs> they said, this is not what you did with Stuart Little. Didn't they plan like two more sequels or something? They were. Like a series. Yeah, but fuck all that. Yeah. So then, 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 it then, was, what then when it was all low, and then he said, man, I gotta just stop putting my name in shit. Because now my name is shit. Like, yeah, my name tampered. is Boo Boo. Mm-hmm. And, and Will Smith said, look, I'm gonna cut you a break. I got this idea about this movie. It's about Scientology. I mean... It's about father and son in space, mm-hmm. and <laughs> did you was that a, was that an accidental thing or did you really? I think I think because the story is by Will Smith, right? So I don't know. It's about like 
a father and son, and then they ended up back in Earth, but Earth is not the same. Earth is, civilization is destroyed, but we got monkeys and birds and stuff, and mm-hmm. but everything wants to kill you. And but and it was really a vehicle for Jaden. It was almost like Will was trying to say, like, I'm going to pass the mantle to you, Jaden. Mm-hmm. And the, the audience was just like, no. Not strong enough. No, not, don't give it to him. Yeah. He'd, be, he'd be out here wearing dresses. Yeah. No. It's not his time. Like, I think he passed that baton way too early in his career. Yeah, you thought he just earned our trust with the pursuit of happiness? I just realized, <laughs> in hindsight, you mean to say that After Earth is Will Smith's Battlefield Earth? I think so. Wow. I think so. The all he does in the movie though is just sit there and just like, uh, I'm weak. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> take a knee. Yeah. <laughs> take a knee. <laughs> take a knee, cadet. <laughs> take a knee. <laughs> okay, so, so now we're finally to so, where we're gonna review yeah, his latest. Because this is important. It took Shyamalan. A lot of people are saying that this is him back to form. Jason Blum from Blumhouse Productions said, you know what, I'm going to cut you a break, but it's got to be the way I do things. Nice, cheap, no expensive actors, and it's got to be found footage. And he's like, I'll do anything, man. I'll do anything. He's like, in your case, Shyamalan, real cheap. I'm going (laughs) to give you five mil for this. Five mil. Usually I do ten, but I'm just going to give you five. (laughs) (laughs) So we got the visit. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's not that bad. Let's get into this, Let's man. Like I am bad. so psyched and ready to hear what you gotta say okay. about this film. I'm so ready to like so, so get the real Ray. Let's get Let's get the Ray oh, Ray. You want, you want, MK. Oh, you want that. You all want day. That. <laughs> you want that. All right. So let's let's go in first with the story. So right. Rebecca and Tyler are two uh, are brothers and sisters that live with their mom, and you know the mom's a single mom because the the dad left. Right, mm-hmm. and uh, their her parents, mom's parents, hit them up on email, I suppose, mm-hmm. because they want to get to know, um, they want to get to know their grandkids. Now, there's like some family drama that nobody wants to talk about in this movie, uh, in 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 the, film. in the film, but they feel like the con- the disconnect that the grandparents and the mom have maybe fix if we send the kids on this trip. Yeah, so, so, so the, basically the daughter's like doing this documentary, right. following the, the daughter's lead here, and she's just trying to find, as she says, the elixir, and you'll get to that at the end of the film for the for so, the mom and the grandparents. So, so we get we get Rebecca and Tyler in the in the grandparents' house and everything seems fine. Mm-hmm. Everything seems cool, you know, like the yeah, in the country, nice you know, they're like in the middle of nowhere, the farm and it's winter and grandma's yeah. baking cookie, pop pop and nana or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Pop pop and nana. Getting the cheddar biscuits, getting Ooh. the pot pie, you know, just the country, mm-hmm. you know, style living. And then nighttime comes and things start getting a little weird. Yeah, you know, by nine thirty, something, <laughs> some shit goes down. It's not, know? it's not right. Everything's not what it seems. A little, you know, and and Grandpa Pop Pop keeps saying, "Oh no, it's just that look. We're old, we're mm-hmm. old." And they're like, "Okay, fine, you're old. What am, what are we gonna do?" Right. You know, but things get weirder and weirder each night. And right. Weirder. Yeah. Oh yeah. I need some everyday footage of our grandparents, so I've decided to spend Thursday afternoon following them around. You hear that? She's laughing and she's watching TV. Maybe Mom and I to watch the same shows. Good afternoon. I heard you laughing. I have the deep darkies. Funnier, you know, like this is something going in now. That, that's the main plot. Like one thing that I actually admired out of this movie is that it has fun. Mm-hmm. The movie has fun with the because I, I guess it knows all this is just big cliches. You know, there's a, we've we've seen this before. You know, from. 
from things act like characters that you think they're okay but later on they start getting weird mm -hmm. you know it goes from i think rosemary's baby all the way back to you know like spinal tap yeah, you know? <laughs> right and uh and this movie really has fun with the cliches and stuff uh so you're saying that it doesn't really take it, itself really seriously in fact in moments banks off of not think, taking itself I seriously. think in moments it doesn't take itself very seriously okay. and I think that I think it was a good balance a lot of the time I'm, I'm not saying 100% a lot of the times it had a good balance you know like because when people are scared in the audience what you know what happens right after you're scared you laugh you know yeah, so man. he kind of tried I, to it was you know it was that. a fun audience that i saw this movie with oh yeah the the ratio between laughs and screams were kind of pretty like on solid point. Yeah. yeah 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 it was on so. point yeah and uh there were things that i liked about the movie yeah uh one thing is like look the found footage is boring at this point found mm -hmm. footage is done i don't need no more found footage but every once in a while there comes a movie that kind of makes it like tolerable uh a few years ago was end of watch when they did the found footage yeah, for cool. the cop movie mm -hmm. and this movie does that too um because at while it's still um uh, found footage it's a very cinematic type of found footage mm -hmm. it doesn't feel so found footage to me yeah you know i and i like that they about run it. with the documentary style really pretty well I want yeah to yeah and it it was well done now did i need little tyler to be a rapper named like t-dub something like T something styles or something. Ty oh. t diamond styles I was, every time right he, something uh, like that every time he opened his mouth saying some kind of you know of... what's funny though like I love this kid you did I love this kid the thing is like he can't rap but <laughs> he you know what like, he's so confident that he I'm like is. he you is know, no. like, I like I like look away from the screen I'm like okay that was kind of hot that, that line was kind of it was really corny it was, but it was kind of hot <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the charisma saved it yeah. the charisma and, saved and it Oxenbold which we've seen the last thing I saw of him, which was Alexander really... and the fucked up day. Alexander, the fuck... terrible, no good, fucked up day. Uh, yeah, Disney's shitty. take on one of my favorite ch children's stories growing up, but it was such a surprise seeing that. Like it was. You were like, scared. You were scared. I was so scared. I, I did not go to see in theaters. I thought, man, it looked like a piece of shit. It tossed like a piece of shit. It must be a piece of shit. And then when I saw it, you know, I think I red boxed it, and then I was like, wow. This is good. You know, I like it. Probably, uh, I probably enjoyed as much reading it when I was a little kid. You know. Yeah. So. No, I really, I really enjoyed and they, that. They movie. made like their own take on it, and Disney. I thought they were gonna Disneyfy it, you know, and it, they kind of do, but it works. It worked. It was and a nice he blend. He was good. Like he kept the movie. Like he held that movie pretty well, as well as the parents. He has it, he um, has a lot of charisma, yeah. I, and I, I think he has a lot of personality. And yeah, I think a he lot knows, of personality. And I think he knows how to bring it beautifully to the screen. Mm -hmm. And he he actually has a lot of chemistry with his sister, play yeah. uh, Rebecca, played by Olivia De Yeah, yeah. I see uh, I've oh, never yeah. seen her before. I don't mm -hmm. think. I, I don't let me think so. let me let's, check. Let me check where she's from. She. Let's look at the resume. Oh, uh, not a lot of stuff. The Sisterhood of Night. I've never seen that movie. Well, apparently Cal Penn's in it. <laughs> okay, so let's... I'll be skipping that. All right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so she's new, and she's pretty good, and too. And she is good, and yeah. she is good. And and they have a, a very good chemistry. Now, this movie has the same kind of problems that I feel like M. Night Shyamalan has on a lot of his movies. The over overabundance and, like, certain things about... In the characters, like... She, okay, I understand that she's really into film... But then she starts. I don't believe her as like a fifteen year old. Is she fifteen? She's supposed Something to be like, like fifteen. That, yeah. I don't believe it. She's using all these big words to not even a high school university university or high school or university kid will be using. Yeah, you know? she's not like, like she's getting an MD or something. Exactly. Like that. <laughs> but I was just like, what the fuck are you talking? Why are you talking to the yeah. to the little boy like that? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then there are like little moments where he, M Night Shyamalan is trying way too hard, like the 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 train the train because he wrote he wrote and directed this right yeah so it just like feels like it does feel like it, it is right. a Shyamalan movie okay, through cool. and through okay. and uh but you were saying about something yeah about like a... the conductor out of nowhere like 
or people who find out that she's making a movie. Well, I used to be an actor. actor. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that was actor. the running joke. There was at least two characters. I would, were like and that. they say the same fucking speech. Do like, they? Yeah. I, would, I thought they deviated and did I something was just different. Like, God damn! Oh, wow. Man, like. Yeah, and, and it was like you shrug your shoulders and you're like, all right, let's keep it moving. Yeah, let's you go through the motions in some of those scenes. You know, but once we get to Nana and Pop Pop, I think things get very interesting and a yeah. lot of fun, a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. Like, and <laughs> my gosh, man, these people are so fucking creepy. They like, are. It makes me not ever want to go to anybody's grandparents. Man, ever like again. I question my relatives sometimes. I know I got like. Some family in Utah. I'm just, I don't, I ain't trying to go to Utah for a whole week with yeah. Pop Pop and Nana. You know what I'm saying? Like it becomes, but it it, <laughs> it deviates so much about from a scary movie into a more like an investigation. And, and trying to find out, you know, what's really going on in the situation. And of course, uh, there's a twist. I'm not gonna say As the twist. As usual. You know, but you know, yeah. I think the only movie that doesn't have a twist is uh, After Earth, and it's because he didn't. And right. Last Airbender, but he didn't write After Earth. You know? right. And right, right. Last right. Airbender, I guess the twist was is that there is no twist. Yeah. But how'd you feel about the twist? You know, did it get you? The did twist. You? The twist is good. The thing is, like you already told me what the twist was. So, but to be honest, did, did it going into the you? film, it, it did get me. Like I already knew what the twist was, and it got you know. Got it's, it's my not wife. Even, they got Cynthia. It, it it wasn't even. Yeah, it got you Cynthia too. Okay. It, it, and it was like, <laughs> like it, it it's not a remarkable groundbreaking no. twist. Yeah, I it's think a very that down any, to earth twist. I want to say, like, I think that the average moviegoer is not stupid enough to get the twist. Like, I'm right. pretty sure they probably figure it out. Yeah, you think so? You think that they will get a point that, like, the audience... I actually think that... Nah. I actually think... You don't think the average moviegoer? No. I think because... Yeah, I mean, it's so not, mu- so not six cents. I think that there's so much into paranormal activity and stuff that they'll think that it's something to do with, like, a cult or something. Mm. Or demons or... And it might be... And because the film does it well to disguise its its twist. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's many possibilities of what... Exactly. These yeah. people are. With the, with the way the grandma act in the middle of the night you think she's yeah. possessed there's something in her eyes like I, the actress was just like i don't know if she's she on point from, what's her name uh deanna dunagan okay. dunagan i'm pretty sure she's got a plethora of films she, she stars in she, something she played, in her she played eyes. the meryl streep character in the stage of august osage county okay and she was in house of cards there's just so something in her eyes it's like she really gets she must be a method actor because there's something in her eyes that conveys something that she really gets into really deep in her character yeah, she, and she's scary she, she is scary. scares me every time I see her the eyes dude the eyes when I see <laughs> it in the film sometimes I have to look away because she even when she acts normal it's like gets nah, to me. So like, like I don't want to fuck with you right yeah, now yeah no like she gets I, to me, man. Like I don't even know how these kids accept that going into the grandparents right. without even seeing a picture. Right. You know, but here, like, you know, let's let's keep going. I'll, I'll okay. go into a little later with that with that comment. But mm-hmm. and and Pop Pop, Pop Pop was scary. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was more grim and down to earth than than like the the over the top scariness. Of, it, it was like a perfect balance between mm-hmm. the two. He had a more like atmospheric 
you know, creepy vibe mm -hmm. than her. You know, yeah. she was just downright scary. She was downright scary. Yeah. He was just like, his presence, he's kind of like, he all of a sudden shows up and it's like, oh, where'd he, you come from? And like, he looks like a serial killer. Yeah. He looks like a freaking serial killer. Yeah. You know, and they're old and they kept and they they keep reminding the the main characters i'm sorry we're, we're just old. old we're just old yeah you know, like, like it's like and they start you know there you are moments, feel bad like man i'm getting scared but i'm literally getting scared of old people like yeah man because there are moments let me reassess they, what i i feelings for with these old people like to to try to kind of like throw you off the scent a mm -hmm. little bit like the even there are moments where the kids help them and save them out of situations yeah. that could end up bad for them. You know, the kids get in the way, they calm them down, they, yeah. you know, and... They really take it upon themselves to help out these people that are demented. Mm -hmm. And just really something creepy is just... And, and Rebecca... Inside their soul. And Rebecca, the daughter, she's she's really just, she has a she's goal. She's justifying everything. She's trying to, At yeah, every exactly. turn, it's like, leave it alone. Right, you know, she's still better on my she, my my computer. Leave it alone. Cause she's she's, old. Cause she was trying to find so much she's closure the, for the right. for her mom. She's like, I'm gonna get the elixir. Right. You know? I love that. I don't know something about that. Let me just get to that. Like something about that word, the elixir. Like it's just like it fits so well. And the, at the end result of the elixir, even though that scene is scary as fuck, but when she gets the elixir. She gets it. Like that scene was like I thought it was one of the strongest scenes in the movie. Which one? The ending. You know, like the last interview of the grandma. The last interview of the grandma. Last yeah. interview of the grandma. I was actually gonna say. Uh, it was scary. It was scary. It was. Scary. It was scary, but it was something deep. Like right, it was. As far as character development goes, and just as far as the character, the characterization of these uh, these people, there's something that they go deep into and they get it. Like. And I, I, I agree with you. I was like Shyamalan. I, 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 that, I agree that point, with you. I was like. I was clapping for Shyamalan because that was a point for him. But I'm going to get to something at the end that really messes up my review of this film. <laughs> I'm going to get to it. Is it, and I is think, it something to I do with know. Tyler? I think you know what? Yeah, uh, I think you know what it is. It <laughs> has something to do with Tyler, yeah. huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, what, I'm agree, I agree with a lot of the things that you say, man. Like, I, I do think that there's a, a very big balance uh, of scary and funny and... And I really think that the whole elixir thing is really strong mm -hmm. in everything. And I think it's like the strongest, the uh, strong suit of this film. You know, that's my opinion. Though. Uh, one thing: do we ever establish that there's any neighbors in the area? No, right? They're by themselves. No, it's an ex it's like a secluded area. They're farmers. Right. That, okay. Just. You know. But yeah, I mean, no. Uh, everything is great. I think. Uh, when it comes to those aspects, I think it's very strong. Mm -hmm. But there's also like it, the movie limits itself as well because mm -hmm. of the found footage. I personally don't like the fact that it's found footage. It didn't need to be. Mm -hmm. If you really look at it, like, well, wh why is it found footage when it could have just been a movie, uh, and of them making a documentary, mm -hmm. you know? And Blair, it would and like it would this this millennium's like Blair Witch. This kind of yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and it could have been it could have been just fine as a movie. Uh, they, this halfway chunk, like the second, the second third, and whatnot, like it's, it it, it gets a little like unnecessary. It, it gets very repetitive. Mm -hmm. It gets very repetitive, and like the same excuse keeps going. Like, well, they're old, they're old, they're yeah. old, they're old. Oh, yeah. So weird. I can't see you. <sighs> I think I can clean it off. Tyler, why are you quiet? Ned and Pop-Up are acting strange. Ow. Kind of strange. Becca, did you hit Tyler? <laughs> no. Kids? Pop-Up wears diapers and he keeps them in an outhouse, and Nana walks around at night without her clothes, and Pop-Up thinks strangers are following him. <sighs> I knew we were going to have this call. You're old, Tyler. I've discussed this with him. Old people have trouble with their bodies sometimes. They also aren't very self-aware. They can get paranoid, too. Rebecca, how strange are they acting? They haven't been mean one second. Nana crawled after us under the house. Playing hide-and-seek. You guys played hide-and-seek under the house? I used to love that! Carrie Underwood. Gee, just bear with it for a couple of days. My parents were 
strange back then. Mom was a hippie. She used to sunbathe in the backyard without warning back then. I'm already partially blind. Oh, I used to get so embarrassed. They're just weird people, honey. What level of problem is this? One. One. See? I miss you guys. You know that you go like, ah, okay, how long? And I'm like looking at my watch a little bit like, it gets creepy, but how many times are you going to see the same thing? Mm -hmm. You know, like, at how night. How much can they tolerate? Like, right. if we play... Exactly. Like, from the... I would be, if I was there, like, my mom's kid, and my grandparents, like, start acting like that one night, bruh. I would have been, like, Man, one, one night, night. call up my mom's, they, like, like, mommy, I need to go home now. This is some old bullshit. No. <laughs> like, you know... The week is done. <laughs> Pick like, me up tonight. Like that hide and seek scene, I was mm. like, I would have been like, fuck that, I'm done with you. Like, yeah. th you know, try to tell me about no damn chicken pot pie. Yeah. Like, no. Hell no. And immediately after that scene, you get a laugh. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and it, it's good, but like, it, the belief of, you know, it starts, I start finding it hard to believe that they would keep staying. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and, that kind of like got me, but I still went with it. Mm -hmm. What really kind of saved it is the third act. Mm. The third act with the twists and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It, 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 it's creepy. It's really gri gripping. It yeah, becomes but, a thriller at the end of the Yeah, film. but it, it's a, a very fun thriller. Yeah. It's a very fun thriller, and, mm -hmm. I, and I really liked it. Would I say it's a, a return to form for Shyamalan? Compared to all the last shit that he's done, yeah, but it's not like amazing. Like mm -hmm. that's the one thing about this movie. It's a lot of fun, and I'm, and I'm, sp I'm speaking like I had a great time with it. Would I run like around screaming like Shyamalan's back? Sha Shyamalan's he's back, baby. Back. He's back, baby. Shyamalan's back. <laughs> not, no. Right. Cause it's still like this. You know, it's a found footage movie. Mm -hmm. It kind of limits itself. He. He does the best of his abilities to do with mm -hmm. the found footage, but it's still very mm, limited. And I think the movie, once it hits that third act twist, like it's a lot of fun. And the way the third that that scene ends, you know, mm -hmm. in the rain with the music from the mm -hmm. sound of music, I go whoa. And to me, that that scene, I was just like, wow, that's so amazing. Like mm -hmm. the way it ends, I think it's I think it's great. I think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Then it cuts to another scene. And I go, oh. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. And, then, <laughs> and you know what? To and be honest, then, if, it and, cut, if, it, if it ended that way... It would have been amazing. Mm -hmm. You know what? I actually would have said, Shyamalan's back, everybody. Shyamalan's back. Mm -hmm. But then he cuts to another scene. And he tries to give us the Shyamalan, kind of like the Sixth Sense, also like, without giving the twist away, like a happy ending. Mm -hmm. You know? And I go, okay, I see this. Just like in Signs and Unbreakable and Sixth Sense, he tries to give us a more happily emotional closure. Yeah. You know? And then I go, you know what? This ain't so bad. It's not amazing, mm -hmm. but I'm going to settle with a good. Or I'm going to settle with a great. You know? Mm -hmm. This is actually a great ending, too. You think the credits are about to roll? No. Let's have one more scene. And this scene is kind of credits and the yeah, credits roll and it we... botches, <laughs> botches all the hard. You know work. what that end credit scene? Shyamalan. Yeah. He's just reminding you this is a family oriented PG thirteen film. It's like why and that you ending do that? felt almost felt like the most rated R we'll ever get. Like this was more rated R than the happening ever right. was. <laughs> True. That that last that last scene before the end credits and before that. that yeah, that yeah. Scene. And that end credits just. Oh, dragged everything down. Yeah, that I, I was ready to leave, but you know I stayed. I don't know why, but I, I stayed. I don't know why I stayed either. I thought maybe the <laughs> maybe like some demon will pop out of the window. Okay, okay, well, hold up. Okay, cause oh, wait, I'm gonna let you get. Okay, go but ahead. let me let me speak on this before we go give ahead, our, our rings. Okay, so in the end credits, can we just say what it is? If you want, it's just more freestyle from Tyler. <laughs> And it's terrible. It's it's, just, it's probably terrible. He, after after it's the uh, most terrible out of the whole film. After ending a but, great scene with, but, with but. gripping with gripping horror yeah. and gripping thrills. Yeah. You know, you continue with a scene and you end that scene with great emotional closure. Okay. Emotional closure. Yeah. And you end that scene and then you continue it with some 
disposable stupid little thing that could have just been in the bonus features of a blu-ray right right it felt like special features but okay so but in his rap he justifies something that happens to him at the end of the film but does not excuse what happened to him and then and you know to be honest maybe i didn't catch that yeah no it it does he like says something about bar soap and it's oh yeah, me yeah, up, yeah you know like yeah. and i was just like okay oh, i'm glad that you brought it up but still it does not does not excuse it to be honest what happens to, to him and i'm not going to speak on it i'll let you watch the film and right. have your own opinion on it okay but what happens to tyler sadly ruins my review for this film i was deeply offended by this film for what happens to tyler why i was why because it's a little kid it's a little kid and to be honest it was really not necessary it almost felt like Shyamalan. I, I, know, I know what you're talking I feel about. Like, I feel like Shyamalan was like, all right, I'm going to give you my Shyamalan shit. And I'm like, no, don't do that. You did it. Fuck you, Shyamalan. For Fuck real? you, Shyamalan. For like, real? I was, when it happened to him, I was just, I literally, like, in the theater, I was like, oh my gosh. Are totally t- unnecessary. In the third, l- let me try to. In totally unnecessary. Act, in the third act. Yes. When, when he's by himself. With, with pop pop with pop pop yeah he's a kid man like that's not funny that's not funny it's not but scary it's a, but it's, it's scary what it's you not, it's, it's not no man it's just it offended me deeply like that kid's gonna have like that is like but but you know what happened like he he because he like the whole movie also is about release of all the psychological problems they yeah. have in the past you know like and he finally it took him to that breaking point to snap Mm-hmm. You know, like I just, just call me old fashioned. I dang, just didn't. I yeah, did not like dang. what the grandpa and, and and you know what's crazy is that you know like I actually I was just like ooh <laughs> I was not like that. I don't know. Maybe me being a parent just like really just changed my perspectives on on everything, especially well, movies. You just don't leave your kid with your grand yeah, with the grandparents. Yeah, but I was to be honest. <laughs> I know it's a film, and I know that's not what it was, but still. But it's also a movie that doesn't take itself so seriously. No, but I took that thing and it killed me, bro. Like it killed me. Like dang, man. It was. It was <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> to be honest I'm gonna say it's up to par to what happens to Ving Rhames at the end of Pulp Fiction and oh, I was just <laughs> <laughs> and, no, and, it, and nothing like that happens in this film relax this is M. Night Shyamalan it does not happen but although you could allude that when no, he starts taking his pants on, I was like man. oh come but this on. is a he's getting adult here no but seriously because he's bro, a germaphobe right yeah because he's a germaphobe and you know and to be honest and I don't know what it was I don't know if he like took like a little like a little shriek before it happened to him but it was just it deeply uh, it got you it deeply got well me. don't say fuck you Shyamalan he got you he got me but in a bad way in a bad way damn that's a damn and to shame. be honest like hey, Shyamalan yeah. you lose I had you had me at this film bro you had me at this film bro like I was on the bandwagon I was gonna be like oh return to form but I'm gonna give you my review and I'm gonna tell you how it is Shyamalan you know, like that, that, that didn't really bother me. It, but it again, me. I, I but guess just, we're, it's just we're, individual. You know, like like I said, we're in two different places. It's just individual. Now you're a parent. I'm not a parent. It's just individual to me. You know. Yeah, I I saw I I I understand. You know, like it, I I guess I just didn't see it as that huge of a situation. Yeah. Uh, I just thought that was like just played for shocks and laughs. You yeah, know? and it did. Like people were because, shocked. People no, laughed, no, but it also was, like, it, it also made offended. but it also made sense because he is a germaphobe. Yeah. Yeah, 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 You know, like he didn't just do it blad just cause. You know, mm-hmm. like he wanted to give a germaphobe the most insanely scary and grotesque, mind breaking thing possible. Yeah, and, and he, he did. did, and he did. So I mean, I, I like it. <laughs> 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 you know, but hey, uh, it, it's um. It didn't bother me. <laughs> yeah. You know what? If you listen to this review, you're like, man, now I gotta go see this movie. I mean, it's not even for the twist. It's about what happens to poor little... To poor little Tyler. Poor little T-Dub or whatever yeah. his fucking name T-Dub is. T-Dub Styles, I think that's what it is. Oh, gosh. So, 
let's let's go down to the nitty gritty. What would you give this movie after saying all that? Are because we, you were high, you were singing praises right now. I was like, I was so. And with then you, this one like, scene <laughs> just, just changed this, uh, my trajectory of the film. One scene just went from from one scene to <laughs> yeah, you know. And you and Shaman thought that he can get me like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna include this little scene for you at the end. Fuck you. That did not justify your actions. <laughs> of him speaking on it in the freestyle did not did not aid anything. But anyways, uh, no, I'm going to agree with you on a lot of the... Th- I, I really, really like this film. Um, the ratio between uh, screams and, and laughs were, like I said, on point. Um, it truly is one of his greater films. Um, but after a slew of terrible films, is that really saying a whole lot? Like... You really have to wow us next time. Like, uh, you have to bring it. Like, you semi brought it with this one. And for that ending, uh, I cannot excuse you for, I thought, going the lazy way out. Going some deeply, like, cheap. You cheapened me out and you cheapened the audience out. And not the twist, but like, not the certain, twist, but not, certain, but the certain aspect of, of, the, of the end result. Um, you know, like, I think what happens to the daughter is a lot more grotesque and a lot more like she you know but he also did too and at that point i was like do it bro do it like i'm so down for you to do it especially when it happens to you um but that scene just really got to me and i don't know like i really felt like you had me Mm -hmm. you had me and to be honest you you offended him to the point that you lost where this is not your return to form it's close. I mean, it's a, it's a good try. Um, you know, we'll, we'll try next time, Shyamalan. But a pat on the back. A little pat on the back, like, hey, like, Shyamalan, you, you got my money still, but again, this is not your return to form. It's a taste of better things to come. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna give this. To be honest, I wanted to give it. I wanted to give it three stars. But I'm gonna give it two and nah, a half. Nah, dang, you offended Peter. I'm right? gonna get it. I'm gonna yeah. give it two and a half. I'm gonna give it two and a half. I really wanted to give it three stars, you know, because I really thought it was a solid film. I thought it was funny. I, to be honest, until the ending, because and it's a no, not to take away from the 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 twist ending, because it's a twist ending and it's a good twist ending. But yeah. just what happens to that character. Is something I know it's a film. I know in, in some films, I there, there are worse things that happen to people in films, and I've seen. But to me, it's it's a kid, and I was just like, man, why did you do that? Like you didn't have to do that. And to to that effect, I just felt like you just took the easy way out. And Damn, man. it could have been a a really solid film and re- a great return to f- form for Shyamalan. But I'm gonna say, um, it was a nice try, and you'll get him next time. A uh, two and a half stars. Two and a half stars. Mm-hmm. Damn. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Damn. Maybe man. I went Ray Ray MK all day on this one. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, I, you know, like the reason, the reason being is just I don't. How can I say this? It's just like I don't see it so serious to me. <laughs> like uh, I just <clears throat> tell Cynthia I was really I was like ask Cynthia I was really I was offended. like well. <clears throat> let's just let, let me put it this way let me let me put it all in retrospect like it's just again it's just a return to form for Shyamalan I think it's a step forward rather mm-hmm. than a step backward mm-hmm. the only thing is that you know we've seen so many different found footage movies that are trying to do different things from uh, Unfriended that while not a good movie I thought was very interesting in the whole idea of you know a whole movie based around facebook and skype and all mm-hmm. that stuff so i was just like okay maybe somebody at least somebody's something doing something different yeah and to watch with the cop you know like with the body with the, cam with the body cams yeah. very and, cool very stylish and then this uh this was a more cinematic approach it was to, cool. it was to almost found like footage a, yeah like a mockumentary or something. you know but at the same time like there's nothing even the twist is just like it's grounded but it's nothing revolutionary Nothing new. You know? Nothing nothing new. Right. Exactly. But it's fun. Yeah, it is like, fun. And I think he knew what he was doing. I think he, he knew, like, I need to do something not as epic and huge. I think I just need to make sure I do something fun. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of moments where, like, his cheesiness, like, the usual M. Night Shyamalan cheesiness, like, mm-hmm. comes into play that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Um, 
the kids are great. Yeah, the, oh, the, yeah. the family's great. Even mm-hmm. uh, we didn't even mention, but Catherine Hahn playing the mom. Oh yeah, is, yeah. She, she's for the limited amount of scenes, yeah. she's she's great. One of my favorite scenes is the scene where she sends them off and she's oh, doing this like dance oh, and almost gosh. like she's like really jokey and playing with her. And she's almost like she's laughing again. This is in perspective from inside the train for the kids. Right. But then as more and more as the train is taking off her whole demeanor changes and then she's going from this really jokey mom like quirky mom to like oh i'm gonna miss you my babies and then she just breaks down crying this is something about what was the actress name Catherine Hahn. Catherine Hahn. just to be honest on a small scale what a revelation like yeah, i really it is, thought it is she, she was really good that here. scene almost that scene broke my heart really yeah, like, yeah. that's just like it's something my mom like i just saw my mom in that scene like right you know like especially the, the when when you see her the last frame of not seeing her pass the train like she's like that's just a mom that's just a mom moment that's just like my babies are leaving me you know yeah it, w- it was very touching mm-hmm. that's that's the most i can say about her performance i can't rave enough but it's at the most it's a touching performance and the uh, the grandparents are really scary the kids have great chemistry and they keep the movie from being the same old you know like at least these kids are more have more personality than your normal horror movie mm-hmm. i will say that yeah uh the scares aren't really that scary like they're creepy mm-hmm. you know uh so i wouldn't even consider this a full-on horror film i just you know uh, but it, it is fun i say the the third act twist is a lot of fun it's mm-hmm. pretty scary i don't think a lot of people will see it coming mm-hmm. uh and i think i think people will enjoy it and then they will be feeling a little duped in the next scene and then they'll be okay with that scene and then they'll feel really stupid by the next scene (laughs) and i think that scene really like hurts the emotional feeling from the from the the scare that you get from the the first scene in the third act to the emotional like fulfillment that you get the emotional satisfaction you get from the second scene Mm -hmm. it it just kind of like botches both of them that i was just like oh and it made me feel like I'm all walking out of the theater. Did I like it? Ah, oh, that scene just kind of, you know. And then I, Yesenia, what you think? She's like, meh. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, meh? And we started talking about it. And it's, a lot of it is because of that you, scene. You offended. I mean, you you defended this. Like, meh. Like, it was better than meh. I was just like, <laughs> no. And I was just like, it is, you know. And it's because the, the cheesiness is there, mm-hmm. like, throughout. And sometimes you just can't buy it you mm-hmm. know what i mean and and between that and the ending and the movie is not spectacular that's the most i can say it's just a lot of fun mm-hmm. and a lot of fun is good enough for me i think that Shyamalan did a good job making this fun i wasn't offended over some <laughs> over over this you know like this moment yeah. i wasn't offended i laughed yeah, <laughs> like, yeah you- i i you know, I'm <laughs> fucked up that way. Like, I'm still not there yet. So I maybe you know. more seeing of the film. Maybe eventually I will laugh. But to tell you the truth, I was just offended by that. Yeah. You know, but all in all, I'm gonna give Peter. Uh, I'm gonna give this movie what Peter was originally gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a three. Mm, okay. I'm gonna give it a three. Nice. And you know I want what? to. Shyamalan, I want to like you should be very thankful you're getting threes yeah because you've been getting zeros for the yeah. f- for quite a few for years quite now, some time now. <laughs> you know yeah. so yeah that's our show for today next week should be a lot more interesting mm-hmm. you know, a lot of movies coming out next week oh yeah we got we got the we all got, star of we September. got maze runner we got black mass yup we got everest mm. we got sicario and select theaters I think so. Yeah. And we got pawn, Grand Sacrifice or Pawn Sacrifice. Oh, I think Pawn Sacrifice. Pawn Sacrifice, yeah. which I'm very excited. I saw to that see. on Tomatoes. Like, they already, they already have, like, a rating for it. I yeah. don't even know what it is. What is it? It's the... Tobey Maguire plays Bobby Fischer oh, in yeah, one yeah, of yeah. the big tournaments the against uh, Lee Schreiber. Okay. And it looks good. Cool. It looks good. So, you know... I'm hoping to try to catch as many of those as I can Yeah. next week. Let's see what happens. But, yeah. So, that's the show for today. You know, check out the movie. Yeah, go check it out. Go check out the movie. Don't we, listen to theater. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, with my uh, scene that I have a problem with, it, it's a lot of fun. And I would recommend it to go see it. If you, Especially if you like scary movies. Especially if you like comedies. It's a nice blend. So, Indeed. Indeed it is. 
So if you need to contact us, you know, we always love comments and everything. You can always put the comments down there and you can hit us up on Twitter. I'm Ray Ray M K R A Y R E I M K. And how can they find you? P E T E Y M K. And we out. Later. There's something wrong with Nan and Papa. You both seem reacting funny. Let's make it a perfect family night. The Visit, rated PG-13.